r slash ask reddit what's some basic knowledge that a scary amount of people don't know antibiotics do not work on a virus edit i did not expect this to blow up this much thank you so much for the awards and the shared information oh jesus this all these idiots demanding antibiotics for the most minor sniffle and the spineless doctors prescribing them are literally creating superbugs making everything worse for everyone antibiotic resistance is real peeps edit for the folks who keeping saying that if virus is not affected by antibiotics then how can this possibly create super bugs simple it's not the viruses they aren't affected by antibiotics it's the bacteria that we naturally have in our bodies that actually acquires the resistance first. When we have natural antibiotic resistant bacteria in our body, bad bacteria is able to acquire this same resistance from our natural bacteria, thus creating superbugs. The point is still the same though, unnecessarily taking antibiotics for viruses triggers a process that leads to superbug creation via antibiotic resistance. You'd love my mother-in-law. She gets them for a cold, takes half a pack and then saves the rest for later, even offers them out to us when we're sick. Open bracket. We don't take them OFC. She has a whole lunch box of old random antibiotics up in her cupboard. I've tried to tell her multiple times she's doing it wrong. But WTF would I know. I only worked in pharmacy for 6 years. Edit. I didn't think this would get so much attention. I throw out dangerous expired meds. I don't want her to die. This was years ago. She has gotten better. Probably sick of my nagging. 17 years later. How long it takes a semi truck to stop? It always makes me mad when I pass a semi. Give them enough space before getting abc over. And some a-hole decides that the space I was leaving for the semi to need to stop is actually for his dumbass to slide into. I'd swear so many people think one car length is plenty of room when everyone's going 70 mph slash 110 kph. Not to pour water into hot oil edit. Damn. This blew up. Open bracket. LOL. I'll also add that that this may not be basic knowledge, but it should be. I myself only found out from one of my science electives in year 11 stroke 12 and even then it was a topic that only came up after a student asked my teacher about an incident that popped up on the news so chances are it would never have been mentioned. Otherwise, schools should at least have a lesson program highlighting the common risks at home and the methods to avoid contain them. Homeroom class would have been a perfect time, we spent the majority of that twiddling our fingers until the bell rang. I put a tiny drop in to know if it's ready sometimes. It booms. I wet my hand and flick towards it to make sure it's hot. It's a minimal amount of water and my hands stay far away. That pretty much every machine requires maintenance. Think dishwashers, washing machines, cars, mowers, etc. They aren't magic boxes, and they will last longer if you know how to maintain them. My mother-in-law is in her 80s and until recently didn't know that the dishwasher needs its filters cleaning every so often. Edit. Since this blew up a bit. For those that would like to locate their dishwasher's filters. They're different for every make and model. You'd do well to google the make and model of the unit and see if you can find a manual. Maybe even YouTube will have some information. YouTube is a great resource for learning about things. Taking my dishwasher as an example. There are some reasonably obvious plastic pieces in the bottom of the washing area that can be slid out unscrewed. There are three parts to my filter. Rubber gloves when touching them might be a good idea. Cleaning them is as simple as taking a brush and some soapy water to them to remove all the gunk before reinstalling. You can also buy a plastic bottle full of chemicals that you put into the dishwasher. You run a cycle and the chemicals clean throughout the unit. I do both because I like a clean dishwasher. I do it every month or so. Or whenever I notice that dishes aren't getting as clean as they should or some not clean smell. Edit. Thanks for the awards. Now clean your dishwashers and computers. A scary number of people seem to think it's all about software wrapped in magic. They just can imagine mechanical, electrical issues, not even heating. I was trying to debug a problem with my dad's ancient desktop computer and it sounded like a fan was burnt out or something. He then went on to say the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I don't understand how a computer can break when there aren't any moving parts. He's not even mechanically dumb. He built houses and fixes his own car. But computers are just a mysterious black box of witchcraft that he refuses to understand lol. 
how to spot an obvious scam. Look how many people fall for those clickbait articles and chain posts and propaganda and stuff. I know right? That's why I'm offering a $5,000 course on how to avoid scams. Enroll today. If you haven't learned what a scam is by the end of the course, money back guaranteed. I have a free course on the same topic. Look at some testimonials it is a legitimate course. Semicolon Mrs. P I used to fall for scams. Now I don't. Mr. J. First aid. People living alone please google how to do a Heimlich on yourself. And remind yourself regularly. It could save your life when you have no one else around. Or if you are choking and alone. Know to run to where people will find you. In the middle of the road. Or in a busy hallway. If you pass out alone in your house no one will find you until it's far too late. A guest requested their chicken to be cooked medium rare this week. I don't understand why I have to stress that chicken only leaves the kitchen when it's completely cooked. The salmonella just makes it more tasty. A colleague tried raw chicken hearts on vacation. Some local thing was violently ill. That you should wait for people to get off the elevator when it arrives at your floor. Instead of cramming yourself in when the doors open. Blocking their departure. And keep walking when you go through a door or step off an escalator. Not if you consider everyone else an NPC and yourself as the main character. I also seriously dislike people who pay absolutely no attention to the people around them. Tax brackets. You only pay the higher rate on the portion above the threshold amount edit. Great example video here. This drives me ducking crazy. I work in manufacturing and make enough that we're right below the threshold for the next tax bracket. So many of my co-workers refuse to take overtime only because they think they'll actually make less money on their paycheck than if they didn't. This mentality is so prevalent even a reply to your comment misrepresents how taxes work only the portion of income above the bracket is taxed at a higher rate. It's always better to make more. You never take home less standard income because you made too much money or however these people think income tax works in fairy tale land edit. A lot of people are commenting about welfare, which is not relevant to my comment about how income tax works. How to merge in traffic. Specifically zipper merging. People are ducking terrible at that. How to tell if food has gone bad. When I worked in a meat department, we got like one call a day from people saying I bought this x days ago. Is it still good? Lady, I'm not there with you. This ain't a smell of phone. You're going to have to use your own senses and brain on this one. My mom will always use meat before the date on the package and refuse to use meat even one day after. It's infuriating. I've had too many conversations that go, man. This bacon doesn't taste right. Yep, yeah, I know. It smelled funky in the package. 2. Then why did you cook it? It doesn't expire until tomorrow. It's been an uphill battle for years now trying to explain to people that the dates on food are at best guidelines but in reality basically just arbitrary. Edit. And as if on cue someone of course pops in to let me know I'm wrong and that consuming food even a day past the expiration will make you sick. It even goes so far as to let us all know day old water will kill you too. Edit 2. Since it keeps getting repeated that best buy or use buy somehow mean different things. I'll drop in this snippet directly from the USDA website to remind everyone that both are in no way regulated or even federally mandated. Except for infant formula. Dates are not an indicator of the product's safety and are not required by federal law. Where their water shut off is in their house. Also that turning off the water doesn't magically depressurize your pipes. If you've got a leak or are DIYing some plumbing you need to open up force it so the water already in the pipes drains out. I live out in the country and have a well. I learned after buying the place even if I switch the well off I have like 30 gallons sitting in the pressurized tank to burn through before the water is truly cut off. Just because it's natural doesn't mean it is automatically healthy. Just because it is artificial or synthetic doesn't mean it is automatically bad for you. Had my GF tell me yesterday that carbonated water was bad for you because it has too many chemicals in it. And I almost screamed back it has two. And one of them is the water. Evidence based reasoning and what evidence means. Prove it. What about you prove it? That the scientific meaning of theory isn't what the colloquial sense means. True. Colloquial meaning of theory is hypothesis. 
The scientific meaning of hypothesis also implies that you're gonna test it. Most people use hypothesis to mean conjecture. It is very easy to not block the whole aisle with your cart at the grocery store. Related. The grocery store is not the place to host your family reunion. How a four-way stop works. Every hurricane in Florida we have several traffic lights go out. People are supposed to treat it like a four-way stop. But instead they do this nonsense. Oh. He went. Ten more of us will go. It's fine. I actually saw one light where people were doing it correctly after Ian and I nearly shit myself I was so shocked. I'd almost prefer that to what happens in the Midwest. Every four-way stop is a nightmare because people want to be polite and wave at you to go first. Even if they were sitting there stopped before you even rolled up. Be predictable. Not polite. I came to a stop at a traffic light that was out, and the lifted truck behind me honked at me. Overdosing on Tylenol. Acetaminophen paracetamol. In large enough doses will prove fatal. The death is slow, painful and cruel. And there's nothing that can be done about it save for a liver transplant which, good luck with that. Edit. Several commenters have correctly pointed out that if treated quickly enough, there is an antidote for this poisoning and there can be a full recovery. When I wrote nothing can be done, I was referring to the point in time when end stage liver damage and failure have occurred. Edit 2. Many commenters now querying what constitutes a large enough dose. With the caveat that mileage may vary with age. Other medications. Alcohol. Existing liver damage. 12 grams of Tylenol as a single dose. Or 24x 500 mg tablets if you prefer. Left without medical attention. Is potentially fatal. Effects are cumulative so frequent. Smaller overdoses over a longer TME frame will give the same end stage liver disease and damage. For a medication that is widely recognized as well tolerated and therefore safe. It sorta kinda ain't that. A friend who was working in the air had to tell a patient that the fistful of Tylenol that they took as a sort of way to guilt their recent ex by sending pics was not in fact harmless and that they didn't just have a bad stomach ache or appendicitis, and that they weren't going to survive due to waiting so long to seek help and they needed to get their family their ASAP. A co-worker from a long time back had a boyfriend who texted her that he swallowed a bottle of Tylenol pills after they broke up. He was just faking, trying to guilt her, but she called 911 right away instead of rushing over like he wanted and the paramedics and a cop showed up at his apartment. He was mad, but I gave her a high five. You can pick the better of two evils and still not like either choice. Related, you don't need to be 100% for one thing and 100% against something else. Every election referendum ever. Don't dive in the water to save a drowning person. They will kill you. Throw them a flotation device. Hand them a broomstick and pull them to safety. Do not get in the water with a panicking person. Wait until they are unconscious and then dive in to retrieve them. Source. Years of swim lessons and unfortunately knowing somebody who has died trying to rescue somebody. My dog. Who swims just fine. Damn near drowned me in water that I could stand in and keep my head above. He must have brushed up against a plant or something and just started to panic. And just like a drowning human would do. Started grabbing at me trying to hold on. Which was of course. Pushing me under for a minute there. Thankfully. He's only 50 pounds. So I just got away from him. Turned around. And picked him up. I can't swim anyway. So you all will not be catching me trying to save a drowning human. Dog tax. Part of my dad's job was being a rescue swimmer for the fire department. In doing so, he's broken the noses of few people. Sometimes you have to bop em in the nose. There's a long handle on the side behind your steering wheel that when you flick it up or down it turns an orange flashing light on that tells other drivers around you which way you're going to be turning. I've noticed a growing number of people signaling the opposite direction than they're turning lately. I don't know what the hell is going on with that but it seems to be more and more common lately here in Toronto. I'm sure it's just natural selection at this point but the amount of stupid people I see walking up to wild creatures for video footage is irritating tbh. Bonus points if the human gets hurt haha. With the corollary of wild animals are not good pets. 
not just things like lions and tigers, as made infamous by bad reality TV as well as Sigmund and Roy. But there are several other exotic animals that just do not make good pets. I have a friend who kind of stumbled into rescuing sugar gliders from people who thought they were cute and were woefully unprepared to care for them. They require enormous amounts of effort, fresh organic food JN specific quantities, a huge variety in their diet, everything from fruit to almonds to meal worms in balanced quantities. They are truly nocturnal which means they don't like being bothered during the day, they don't particularly like being touched or handled, and they literally scream at night. As an added bonus, vets don't really have a lot of experience with them, so if and when something happens, the vet is just as likely to be as confused as you are if they're even willing to see you in the first place. And yet people get scammed into thinking they are a cute equivalent to hamsters or something. As someone who rescues animals it's often appalling how little effort people put into caring for their pets in general. How little they understand the needs of the animal. But owning exotics is like the epitome of ignoring reality. Don't put water on a grease fire. This is when your pan pot catches fire while cooking. Cover it with a pot or pan lid and turn off the heat edit. People in the replies have also added that baking soda and salt can work to smother the fire. Additionally a grease fire safe extinguisher is a good thing to have in your kitchen. If the grease fire cannot be smothered, baking soda puts out a grease fire. If you run out of baking soda, salt also can help put it out. It takes a lot of both though. Whatever you do, do not use flour. Women don't pee through their vagina. We know that. Women pee out their butt. Ah yes. The female clicker. Politicians are government employees. They literally work for you. Hold them accountable. And for duck's sake. Don't make them your personality. That not all internet news is real. All the news in our papers and on the news on TV. How to swim. I have mastered the art of not drowning in water I can't stand in. What's it called again? Not going in it. The difference between there, there, and there. Loose and loose infuriates me. And to, two, and two. Sit properly in any vehicles. Leg injuries are no joke and you can even dislocate break your legs easily in a car crash because your legs were on the dashboard. Yeah but how else am I supposed to look cool whilst I drive? Control plus C. Control plus V. Control plus W equals instantly close a tab on a browser. Control plus shift plus T equals reopen the last close tab bonus. Control plus shift plus N equals opens incognito tab window. You can't reopen tabs on incognito once it's gone it's gone. Non-porn bonus. Control plus shift plus escape to open task manager instead of doing control alt delete. Much easier key bind to hit. Ponies are small horses. Not baby horses. Not to be confused with miniature horses. Financial literacy. It is so so important but a lot of people just don't know shit. This. I never used to budget or anything. And now in my. Late OMG. 30s my job role expanded to include budgeting. Now I apply it to outside of work and it's just instantly halved any finance stresses I had. They should teach this stuff in school to be honest. That mixing bleach and pine sol creates toxic fumes that can actually kill you if they build up too much in a room. A scary number of people actually do this though in their laundry or when cleaning their homes. Yes, everyone knows about bleach and ammonia, but they seem to think that's all there is. Fact is, many cleaning products can produce toxic fumes when mixed. Don't mix things with bleach, for any reason. Cooking. Right, it is so simple. Buying the ingredients for meth is the hard part. Years and years ago I read a book that took place in Australia. I'm in the USA. In the book it was Christmas time. And also summer time because that's how it works. The narrator described Christmas decorations that were snow themed. Santa still in his red suit. Etc. And I thought it was interesting that the decorations were still winter themed even though it was summer. Open bracket. This book is my only source for this information so I don't even know if this is really the case. Anyway, I went around to like 5-6 people at work trying to tell them that I found this info mildly interesting. And I always started with you know how December is summer in Australia? And literally not one person knew that. 
like. Everyone was confused about it. I felt like I was taking crazy pills because I thought that was common knowledge. Ozzy here. As a kid I had a Christmas shirt with Santa surfing in swimming shorts. Unsolicited advice is generally going to be taken as criticism. Criticizing the people in your personal life creates distance. Butting in where you aren't wanted is going to harm your relationships with other people. And they're going to take your opinions and advice less seriously over time because they'll think of you as a nudgy know-it-all. Overbearing people get tuned out. Instead, first ask yourself if your advice is even needed. Does this affect you? Is this an emergency? Is anyone going to be harmed if you don't put your or in? Are you being asked for advice? Or is this person just sharing information about their day and building their relationship with you? And if you do need to weigh in, try leading with. May I make a suggestion? Otherwise, you're going to rile the other person up. And on the flip side, if you have a nudgy know-it-all in your life, it's best to simply pause them with a calm and polite, thanks, but I didn't ask. If you try to explain your life to them, they see it as an invitation to be even more overbearing. Drowning doesn't usually look like drowning on TV. 9 out of 10. It's just silent. The person goes under and doesn't come back up. And choking doesn't look like choking is seen on TV either. If there's any hacking coughing, they aren't choking and don't need a Heimlich maneuver. You only use the Heimlich if there's no sound coming out of their mouth. I worked in a care home. I literally had a lady choke to death on me. It was silent. I did the Heimlich. It didn't work. Another resident thought we were hurting the lady and was attacking us to get off her the whole time. The chest compressions didn't work to keep her alive until until the paramedics arrived. We ended up in court over it. It was the most horrific experience of my life. I will never work in care again. I did the job for 12 years before that. That's horrible. When I was around 12 I choked on some bacon fat that was wrapped around a pork medallion at dinner. There were at least 5 other family members present. I banged on the plates and gestured at my throat several times but to no avail. Eventually, having been trained in the scouts over the previous year, I got up, walked round to the back of the chair, and proceeded to do the Heimlich maneuver on myself. Using the wrapped fist and chair combo method, it worked, and I plopped out a large piece of bacon fat. Everyone around me was like WTF, and I said I was choking, and they laughed and said oh, we'd know if you were choking. Dut. It wasn't until this past year, now 30 years later that I learned from my elder sister, who was trained as an RN. Watched in horror as my mother continued ignoring my nephew whom she was babysitting in a similar way when he choked on a grape. Apparently, once he turned blue and purple my sister finally managed to convince my mother to do the Heimlich, but wouldn't let her do it. My mother insisted on doing it herself, but having had no training asked to be walked through it instead. Like. My mother nearly let myself and my nephew die over her own ego and ignorance. The elites don't want you to know this but the ducks at the park are free you can take them home I have 458 ducks. Reddit is not real life. Social media in general, especially when you look around at your local demographic, none of this reflects that Africa is not a country. Also, not all black people are African American. I had a girl tell me about African Americans in England and I was like the what now? Cops can lie to you. Cops are also not obligated to read you your Miranda rights upon arrest unless they are going to interview you. Which they usually won't when they are on scene. However, that doesn't mean they won't use anything you say still against you. So keep your damn mouth shut when dealing with cops. Wait until you have a lawyer present. That epipens and Narcan do not stop reactions overdoses. They slow them down so getting a person to proper care is still a necessity. That a lot of things should not be put in your body. But, on the other hand, a lot of things should. How to talk to people, like, in general, stuff like basic phone etiquette, greeting, ending a conversation. That chimpanzees are apes. Also, monkeys aren't chimpanzees. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.